The GRDC Dealing with the Dry Forums brings together keynote speakers, one of whom is Greg Rumry. Greg is a leading Northern New South Wales agronomist. So have we seen this before in terms of you know, the prevailing drought conditions? If we go back and look at the last 120 to 140 odd years rainfall records at a place like Walgan, my take on it is we've seen this before. And Climate, as the app that was developed by uh, Queensland Government, is a really good tool for producers and advisors to better understand the environments they operate their businesses in. Often the opportunity that presents at the end of a drought is above average rainfall and we need to have enough fertility in the system to allow the system to bounce so that as producers we can capture the full potential of the opportunity. It's not just soil fertility the way we understand it in terms of phosphorus uh, and nitrogen, it's probably wider than that to some of the micronutrients, other, big, other macronutrients like potassium is becoming an increasingly uh, important factor also. A good example I'd often quote in relation to that elasticity in relation to fertility is the last opportunities we had at Walgut, which was 2016, we had farmers producing over seven tonnes to the hectare, but side or next door neighbours producing three tonne to the hectares of lower protein grain. So that's a, that's a, a really large production differential and it really is just a factor uh, or driven by uh, inherent soil fertility and, and, and other management factors. So another factor that producers need to be well aware about coming out of droughts is herbicide residues. What needs to go with that is good record keeping as to when herbicides are applied in fields, uh, the rates that are used and the rainfall then that has fallen post application because that's what I need as an agronomist to make an assessment as to the risk that that herbicide residue may pose to the following crop choice. So all growers need to be well aware that fallows are really the key part of our production systems. The fallows allow us to build moisture which the subsequent crop then obviously utilises uh, during its growth period. But fallows are a key part even during drought periods. We need to maintain fallow management and the reason for that is uh, even weeds on fallows at relatively low densities extract soil water that we need to preserve for the following crop to use. Really critical part of the, of, of the recovery from drought. And so a key part of fallow management is retaining and maintaining ground cover. Uh, and one of the aspects of droughts, or one of the downsides of droughts is typically ground cover reduces over time. And we've got a lot of paddocks around the northwest at the moment at low ground cover levels. Uh, and we need to, part of the fallow management needs to be uh, at least asking the questions, do we actually plant a cover crop on, the, on those areas purely for cover? And the key difference with fallows is the crop leading into the fallow, so the crop just harvested, be it for hay or grain, has a big influence on the amount of cover you carry into that fallow. So legume crops typically carry little ground cover into the following fallow and end up being bare or becoming you know, bare and blowing uh, the first. And cereal stubbles, be them wheat, barley, even grain sorghum, uh, tend to carry much higher levels of cover and it persists for much longer into the fallow. The drought we're experiencing now really started at the end of 2012 and whilst we were lucky to get a crop in 16, so if we look at it in its entirety, the current drought runs from 13, 14, 15, a little bit of reprieve in 16 with a crop, uh, 17, 18, 19. But if we look at that in the context, as a whole context, this drought has run for six of the last seven years. This is the worst period of drought that we've experienced in that last 50 to 70 years of modern agriculture where grain production has been part of the scene. So it's different from that point of view. The sorts of challenges that, that uh, landholders are going through is that with that change in enterprise to a more crop production base, as opposed to a livestock base, that carries a higher cost structure, higher operational cost structure. And so long periods of low or no income at a farm level have, uh, have a big impact on businesses that have a higher cost base. And so, yeah, farmers, no doubt about them, are doing it very hard at the moment 
when it comes to financial management and financial viability and the challenges that go with ensuring that they've got the cash required to get the next opportunity across the line in terms of grain production. And so there's a lot of talk out there in farmer land at the moment about how they're going to do that and whether they are able to do that. So yeah, there's no doubt that there are times when the financial restrictions on the business then impact on the agronomy decisions that we're able to make. And so again, if we unwind that and go back to understanding the business has got some serious financial constraints, we need to be very much aware that, that the next opportunity has to be driven by low risk crop options uh, and low cost crop options to help manage that issue. All past droughts have ended. Uh, they all end with, uh, with rainfall and we should remain hopeful that that will happen with this drought. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.